Hello and welcome everyone. This is Black Gather at the RTS League channel and we are here with the second semi-finals of season 39 of RTS League's Age of Empires 2 The Conqueror's Clan League. It's going to be between CZ Clan and the Jedi Master Z. So definitely pretty great clans and especially looking at the players. Looking at CZ of course, they have won the RTS League in like four seasons out of last five. Just have been interrupted by LOS and I'm today going to be joined by Janet is going to be helping me cast the game and I welcome him in the channel. Hello, thank you Black Adder. It's gonna be a good game here, two very strong teams I guess. Yeah, that should exactly be what you will be seeing in here. So I'm just gonna finish sending broadcast so that everybody is <laughs> well aware what's happening in this early game. And well unfortunately my Age of Empires crashed so I'm gonna have to rejoin <laughs> somehow. Well, I can uh, tell the viewers what's going on at the moment. Um, so the first map is Decentering, which is um, an uncommon map, I should say. And well, you start with um, your villagers in a nomad style, no town center on a tiny, tiny island. And well, you have to chop some wood to collect the 275 for a town center. Use the transport ship to get to the outside you know that's why it's called decentering you have to get out of the center and yeah then it's uh, gonna be about water and land at the same time all right so i have finally been able to get my game going so i'm just going to turn off all the overlays and such so that we see the game itself and well yeah right now we are in the game and looking at the civilizations in this 2v2 which is unusual for rts league we usually have 3v3 or 4v4, but the players were having kind of problems getting on some kind of common time, but we are glad that they are on. And looking at the civilizations as I have started with it, we are having Chinese Mayans for the Jedi Z and Chinese Vikings for CZ. So Janet, what do you actually think is the better combination for this kind of map? Are you with me right now still? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I was talking away while I was muted. Uh, I said I, <laughs> I'm I'm not a real expert on this map, but I think to have um, Vikings on the team is really really helpful because water is so important. You have tons of fish on this map. Um, yeah, Chinese obviously the extra villagers. Mayans get one extra villager and nice economy bonuses. But I think Vikings are better than Mayans probably. From what I have seen in the first uh, semi-finals between VN and Wix that we have seen last week, uh, VN actually did have a special strategy and that was a person who was fast landing. Basically he was landing really really fast, so he of course was late to feudal age, but then it basically allowed him to boom quite strongly and also much more importantly he was already set up and that basically allowed him to rate anybody who was landing after him and that basically won them the game. So. Do you actually expect that somebody could be doing something like that or is it going to be fairly standard water fight and then see what happens? This map allows for a lot of strategies. As you said, um, the common or the most common thing is to, uh, to get galleys out as soon as possible and stop your opponents from uh, you know, gathering fish and food. Um, I, I can think of many things. You could even sling the Mayan. Just imagine that. Um, get out plumes as soon as possible and and fight 2v1 with the sling. Could work. We'll have to see. It definitely good. And to, to go back to the Vikings that you were talking about a bit earlier, uh, if I remember correctly in the VN's match that was actually in the power of Winchester. And you can imagine that was pretty strong from him. And he did really make quite a big difference in there. So yeah, I wouldn't really discount that possibility exactly of what you said, that the fish rating is going to be much more important in this map right now in between CZ and the Jedi Z. And it might be strategy of choice for basically both of the teams in here. Looking around the map, I don't really think that there should be any kind of disadvantage for any team because the resources are pretty, ni pretty much nicely spread out over the map and there is an abundance of them literally everywhere. So <laughs> there's not really a bad placement for you to land. So I'm not really thinking that should be something that will decide the game. And let's see if maybe somebody will make some kind of mistake. Because if I remember correctly, 
uh, somebody got housed and it really slowed them down quite a lot last time around so that's something to keep in mind as usually this start is pretty uncommon for all of the players and <laughs> without the TC and really keeping in mind all the different quantities of wood is definitely not an easy thing to do. Yeah, I agree. This, I mean, this map wasn't it part in AOC already, but it has never been really played a lot online or in competitive events. Um, so maybe, maybe Influenza has has a slight advantage here because he plays Nomad a lot. He's a very versatile player. Um, Yannick, I know, is he improved a lot um, over the last few months and I think he placed second in uh, Master of Arena 4 so yeah that's maybe this map is not his cup of tea for Yannick yeah I would also kind of imagine that this uh, this kind of nomad map should be definitely favoring the Jedi Z who are pretty much the very best in RTS League and maybe not even there in playing this map in team games I think they have, in the past two seasons, they have lost just one game on Omad, if I remember correctly. Maybe not even that, maybe I'm remembering it wrong. But I just remember they are really damn good. And when they win the games, it's not like it will be some kind of long, drawn out and equal game. It's basically just a by landslide. So I'm really curious if they are <laughs> going to be able to somehow translate that into this a bit different Nomad, but still a Nomad type of game. So we have also seen the first dog being dropped by Yannick was by far the far fastest of them all. Nobody else is really just dropping dogs yet. It's kind of curious. He's really faster. <laughs> by yeah, than all Chinese, of them. Chinese player for Jedi is Robo and he doesn't have a dog yet. Yeah. But he does have a red sheep in there <laughs> from Exit who could actually be scouting a bit huh. this island. Question from the chat. Uh, yes, it is 2v2 because uh, both teams agreed on it. Um, Jedi had problems um, yeah, scheduling this weekend, so thankfully CZ agreed to play 2v2. Yeah, unfortunately not only this weekend, so this is basically the reason why even CZ agreed to 2v2. Because to be completely honest, this is a bit better for the Jedi Z, because in 3v3 CZs are very hard to beat, especially with the lineup that they are having with like Skull and Mango and other great players like Follow Your Mind or you may know him under the name Error as well. And we are also in the meantime seeing that the dogs are finally being dropped by other players. And <laughs> funny situation with Robo, he was having almost finished dog, 45 hit points yeah. left and he had to switch into, into a house because he was housed. Oh, uh, that definitely sucked. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me think for a moment. It is pretty late already in Australia, isn't it? Uh, it's so. 1 a.m. Could be 1 a.m. for Robo. Yeah. So that kind of explains that he might be a bit yeah. tired in there. Yeah, you, you mentioned the player levels. Um, so Robo, I would say, is about 1750. Influenza, probably 2000, you know, roughly. 2k. Um, Yannick, I would say, is solid 2.1k. And Exit, um, he showed 1830 in his profile, but I think in reality he's stronger. So I think hmm, CZ on paper looks stronger. We'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, and it's looking like that the first settlers are actually going to be arriving on the mainland. And it's looking like that Influenza is going to be the first to land with at least a few of them. And he does have a pretty good spot in there. He will see some extra hunt, which will definitely help him if he's pushed off the water soon, which I would be expecting from Yannick, who is advancing at pretty much the same time as him into feudal. Robo is not really far behind. And only exit is taking a bit of extra time. And well, looking at his villages, he's having just 16. That's curiously low number. And otherwise, hmm, the others are much better off at 18, 19, and 21 for Influenzino. So this is basically confirming what we're talking about with Influenzio as the Nomad Expert having the most villagers definitely putting him on for a pretty good game for himself. Yannick yeah, and the also landed, sorry. 21 villagers for Influenza is very good, I agree. And I'm really curious what went wrong actually for Exit as the Viking, so I would be kind of expecting that he would be wanting to advance as fast as possible and he still isn't. So that may be a bit of a problem for the CZ team actually, because even though Yannick might be advancing and might be playing well, 
they were probably hoping that actually the Viking could be the one that will be even in the water and not really Yannick. Yeah, th that is ideally uh, what you do. Viking getting water control early and Chinese booming up a little more. Yeah, so far that doesn't seem to be happening. Right now, exit is finally clicking into fuel age once everybody is already in for about a minute. So that's definitely pretty late. And let's see if Yannick can actually hold on long enough for him to come back into the game or if it's going to be already decided by the time, which could definitely happen because we have seen that Roboboro and Influenzino are both having two dogs as a third is already coming up I guess against three of Yannick. So it's not really going to be all that easy for them, but still. They should be having the advantage of numbers, so let's see if they are going to be able to take the advantage and to win the water overall. I also landing for exit, so he's maybe even ignoring the water. He's going for a second dock now, so not really completely ignoring it. But looking mm -hmm. like that he's actually aim aiming for land. Exactly as Robo, so basically all four, all four players on. Quickly jumping to exit, um, he's up uh, by 75%. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Pretty late. Sending more and more villagers. Yeah, and really the, the number of villagers that he's actually behind is right now at about 4 or 5. <laughs> That's basically a quarter or mm. fifth of all the villagers are you... that the top players are. Just quickly, um, are you looking at the red dogs, the galley wars yeah, yeah. started? <laughs> yeah. Pretty tough. Just 200 hit points remaining. He was unfortunately stopped. And that's exactly what is pretty dangerous on the, about this map. And why water is important and not really to be somehow forgotten. Because if you lose the water, you basically have everything in range of the galleys on the little island. So we are potentially going to be losing a lot of resources that are in there. Like the stone and the gold is definitely not something that either of the teams would be wanting to have on their plate. Well, yeah, that's mm. potentially a pretty big problem. I mean, I mean, the the scores show it clearly right now. Exit is behind everyone else, and he might lose his town center if if um, the Jedi team reaches Castle Age. Yeah, at this point, I'm not really seeing how actually the Jedi that could be losing the water because looking at the sheer numbers, even influencing, I think. It's basically equal with Yannick and it means that Roboboro is not really going to be able to lose against Exit with the very late advance. And looking at overall the teamwork, I have to say that actually the Jedi set are much better off. Which is not all that surprising because Exit is not playing with CZ uh, in RTS League all that often. And basically for the Jedi set, this is a normal team, team composition and it is definitely paying off. As they basically know what they are doing at all the time. And that is definitely paying off for them just now. Exit yet again housed. <laughs> mm, right, 35 population. <laughs> yeah, and he's of course going to be losing all the water economy as he's being raided by Robo quite nicely. And that means that his, uh, how many fishing boats? Four, are not really going to be all that useful for him. And he's really just all the faster falling behind in the economy. And that's probably going to be something that will be quite deciding for this game overall. And, well, it's going to be right now, I think, all about how fast actually Yannick can move on the land. Because I'm not exactly thinking that Exit will be all that strong force on either land or on the water. And also about the Jedi Z, if they recognize that they have basically somehow won the water and if they are going to be overcommitting or not because if they overcommit and fight for the water a bit too long they might exactly allow Yannick to do whatever he wants on the land and that might be still something rather a way for CZ to somehow come back into the game because so far mm -hmm. it's not going well. I'm just looking at um, the statistics in spectator overlay. Um, Yannick and Influence are pretty similar both in food and wood collected in total um but robo has collected um 800 more wood than uh, exit and 500 more food so yeah the chinese players are about the same right now and robo with mayans is far ahead of exit right now yeah there's a bit of fighting at the top between Robo and Exit. So Exit seems to be making a, at least a slight comeback on the water, not really wanting to give up on it at all. But there are going to be a bit more reinforcements coming for Robo from the top, so not really 
any kind of significant advantage in numbers. Whereas on the left, well, Yannick seems to be basically holding his own, and maybe even slightly inching into advantage in numbers. Against Influenzio. Mm, as Influenzio, Influenza just, just just hit the lumber yeah, camp from that was pretty uh, nice yeah. from him. Also, Exit should not give up on the water. He's the only Viking player in this game, so yeah, he needs to win the water to play out the advantage. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, and ah, there's a pretty big fight right now between uh, Robo being caught in a pretty bad moment by Yannick. So that's definitely going to help CZ to make some kind of bit of a comeback on the water and I'm also thinking even though Influenzino is having fourth dogs, four dogs, and basically as Yannick, he seems to be much more interested in raiding around and trying to kill, I don't know, some kind of remaining fishing boats, maybe even some villages on the shorelines in there, then engaging fully with the armies and that's, I'm not exactly sure if that's actually the correct decision because I'm thinking it, it's letting CZ basically recuperate from later advance of exit and such and right now oh well that's a tough battle for influencing to take on the left yes full 2v1 he needs to preserve his navy right now somehow just get out of there yeah yannick is doing a pretty good job trying to get below him and oh well there are some villages loaded in the transport ship in there yeah okay he moves i hope them ship, actually yeah. <laughs> i finally noticed <laughs> actually he doesn't want to lose them yeah this is so um, far question late. Yeah? from the chat what's the name of this map and i have to correct myself i said something uh, wrong earlier um, this map is called um, nc decentering version one and i said it was part of uh, standard aoc it wasn't in standard aoc there was a map called pilgrims which is very similar so yeah i hope that makes it clear all right that clears things up as robot is joining through fight as well and right now it might be turning into a bit of a problem with four CZs because they somehow lost the numbers. I'm not exactly sure how that happened because the fight was still going quite nicely on the left. But they probably let themselves be caught off guard by Robo on the right side. So right now the numbers are still pretty much equal. So the fight is on, which is definitely nice to see as it's <laughs> meaning that we are going to be seeing a whole lot more game in here. And I'm kind of thinking that we are at 25 minutes and we should be slowly seeing uh, if somebody is going to advance into Castle Age, because mm -hmm. I've already seen Blacksmith being dropped by Yannick. So he should be having enough buildings yeah. to actually advance into I'm the gonna next toggle, age. I'm going to toggle through the players. Let me see. The food counts are all really low. Oh, um, yeah. 200 food for Robo, and the others are below that even. Yeah, so. Basically at zero. <laughs> Only Robo seems yeah. to be aiming for that. So that may be his plan at about now, because he's also having quite a lot of gold in there hidden. So he's maybe hoping that he could be jumping into the castle and then with the war galleys that would definitely be helping him quite a lot. And he's gathering a whole lot of gold actually. They have a lot of elites on it. Kind of as opposed to the other players, which is curious to be honest. So he yeah, might be really thinking great. about advancing faster into the castle age than the others. And then... Well, not exactly sure. Maybe just to drop a castle right off the bat somewhere and go for the offensive with the plumed archers. Yeah, Robo is heavy on stone. That is five oh, villages there. Yeah. yeah. And a flu influenza in the north is um, oh. tower rushing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a bit of a problem uh, for Yannick because he was already quite curiously placed in the lumber camp in there, as we have seen a bit earlier the raiding on him. So that's definitely why you don't want to place the lumber camp so close to the water. So obviously, the water is not really all that easily yeah. won. And on the other hand, Influenza lost um, three villagers on his starting island to uh, red galleys. Oh yeah, that was pretty nice raid in. Few skeletons in there, strewn about, and he might be losing a whole lot more. Because you can see they are basically closing in CZs, <laughs> like piranhas. Because they are exactly expecting that the gold is going to run out pretty soon. And there's a whole lot of villagers, and if they can actually pre prevent any kind of transport of those, they will be basically killing Influenzino's economy. So let's see about that, if they are able to somehow control that, because that's definitely something that Yannick is right now aiming for. So Influenzino is coming back home, he'll be hoping that he can somehow protect himself and transport a bit more villagers on the mainland than he's User already having. The channel timed out. It's almost as if Janet actually timed out. 
of drone on team speak i'm gonna check yeah so he's gonna join in just a moment so i'm going to continue other speaking alone and let's move back to the top where a lot of towers are actually coming up <laughs> as yannick is having a bit of fun with influenzinho and influenzinho has already dropped four towers it's quite a big number but now he's going to be dropping fifth in pretty dangerous position he's having nine already nine into range which is one two three four five six seven eight nine that's definitely on this whole shoreline or rather line of the wood so he's already forcing yannick to move a bit through north rather to the south but with the tower already being in place i don't really think it's going to be all that much of a problem for him because he has been able to <laughs> nicely trap those two villages and yeah influencing doesn't have anything he's extra in there channel. so that's of course not going to work for him for much longer even though he's arriving in the battle scene with more boats as yannick is arriving as well so janet you should be with us with us yet again Hello, sorry for the drop, don't know what happened there. Yeah, and it's exactly but, um, as GG's are happening, <laughs> and CZ's are actually <laughs> resigning, as they have probably lost, I don't know, I don't know, they have lost the water or something. Yeah, pretty much. The numbers are not really great for Yannick, who would be losing basically a whole army to influence you at the top. Fereas on the right, the Viking is, well, have a, some kind of guess, he's probably not having... Uh, lower numbers, but they are probably resigning because of the castle age. I agree, yeah. Uh, because the, the war galleys, was... there would be absolutely no defense, and it's looking like that Yannick and the neither exit would be actually advancing anytime soon. Yeah, looking at the resources, that's exactly the reason why they are resigning. So, interesting ending. Kinda sudden, to be honest, <laughs> after a bit of fun in here with the towers, but well. It, to be honest, it looked that it looked that way going for the Jedi Masters from the very start. Influenzinho's pretty strong play. Yeah, we're using the team chat in the game room. Team Jedi is obviously very happy to take game number one here. Uh, maybe we should tell our viewers. Um, I am definitely not not very impartial here. I'm in. Jedi clan as well. And I think um, Black Adder, if he's honest, um, he knows the CZ guys very well. So I guess that evens it out a little. Yeah, I of course try to be as impartial as possible. It's usually, it's usually turns out in something like that. I usually support the underdogs. So the team that is actually losing. <laughs> and this time it was CZ's. As, but to be honest, the Jedi definitely deserved the win. Because they played really well, especially again Influenzino. He was really pre playing pretty great, having nice economy, and his experience with Nomad type maps definitely came through. So I've just finished with uh, going through the post game. Not much really interesting stuff in there. So GG, and we'll be moving back. In